Our topic for today is the limiting reactant. The reactant that is consumed completely and thus controls the amount of product form is known as the limiting reactant. You also might see this as the limiting reagent. In this problem, if a sample containing 18.1 grams of ammonia reacts with 90.4 grams of copper 2 oxide. Which of those two reactants is the limiting reactant? And from that, how many grams of nitrogen gas will form? We recognize a limiting reactant problem because we are given the quantities of both reactants. Now, we don't have a balanced equation here, so we don't realize by reading this problem that these are quantities of both reactants. Well, let's look at the balanced equation. And you will, beget, you will begin to understand what we're having to deal with here. Okay, so we've got two reactants here. We've got ammonia and we have copper 2 oxide, and they're going to react together to give us nitrogen gas, copper, and water. So let's go ahead and balance this equation real quick. So we're going to need to, and we're going to need three. So now we've got two nitrogens, two nitrogens, six hydrogens, Six hydrogens, a copper, a copper, one oxygen, three oxygens. Oh, is this going to be a mess? So now let's go three oxygens, and we're going to need three coppers. Okay, I think that's going to do it. Do you need something? Yeah, I need a notebook. Okay, in this problem, we are given the quantity of both of the reactants and asked, based on that, how much nitrogen is going to form. So because the quantities of both reactants are given in the problem, we're going to need to determine which of those two reactants are going to run out first. And that is what is the limiting reactant. And then based on the one that's going to run out first, that's how we're going to do our stoichiometry to figure out how much N2 can get made. Because you can imagine that if one of these runs out before the other one, no more product is going to get made. Right? As soon as one of the two reactants runs out, no more product is going to get made. Thus, the limiting reactant controls or dictates the amount of product form. So the first thing we need to know from this problem here is which of these two, the ammonia or the copper 2 oxide, is going to run out first. The one that runs out first, that is our limiting reactant. And so the way for us to figure out which one is going to run out first is to figure out how many moles of each of them we have. And then once we know how many moles of each of them we have, we look at the mole ratio and we can figure out which one we have, which one is going to limit, and which one we have is, um, the other one is, we say, in excess. All right, so let's first of all start with um, figuring out how many moles of each reactant we have. So, we've got 18.1 grams of ammonia. And we're going to convert that into moles of ammonia using molar mass. 
And for ammonia, it's 17.03 grams of ammonia per mole.
ammonia. Do we have 1.59 moles of copper to oxide? Do we have? Do we have 1.59 moles of copper to oxide given in our problem? No, we have 1.14 moles of copper 2 oxide. We don't have enough copper 2 oxide to react with all of our ammonia. Do we have 1.59 moles of copper 2 oxide? No, we do not. We calculated we have 1.14. So that means that copper 2 oxide is our limiting reactant. Now, what if we get this thing all set up and it's, uh, we calculate this number and we end up having um, 2 oxide based on this calculation. If this answer comes out to be yes, then that means that our other reactant is the limiting reactant. But in this case, no, we don't have this much, so CuO limits. Copper 2 oxide is the limiting reactant. And because Copper 2 oxide limits the amount of product we're going to form because copper 2 oxide runs out first. In terms of mole ratios, we have more ammonia than we have copper 2 oxide. So copper 2 oxide is going to run out first, and so we have to use copper 2 oxide to do the stoichiometry to figure out the amount of nitrogen that is formed. So, our next step is to figure out how much N2 we're going to make. We've got 90.4 grams of copper 2 oxide. And remember, again, we are using the copper 2 oxide to figure out how much product we're going to make because copper 2 oxide runs out first. And so it's going to limit the amount of product we're going to make. If we use the other, the ammonia, we're going to way overcalculate, overestimate the amount of product that we're going to make in this reaction. Okay, so uh, copper 2 oxide is 79.55 grams per mole. Okay, and for this question, we're looking for how much N2 is going to form. So that means our given is moles of CuO. We're looking not for moles of N2. Are we looking for moles or are we looking for grams of N2? We're looking for grams of N2. Okay, I need a mole ratio here, so I need to go back to my balanced equation. So we are in a 3 to 1 mole ratio. 3 to 1 mole ratio. And my question is not asking me for moles of N2, it's asking me for grams of N2. And so, last but not least, I have to convert with my molar mass, which is 
which is 28, 0, 02 grams of N2 per mole. And then two. So do my units cancel? Have I done this correctly? Right? Good. I'm good. I'm good. So 90.4 divided by 79.55, divided by 3, times 28.02, and that should give us 10.6.